Hey, this is Emilani Massage Therapy, and thanks for watching my videos. This will be the sixth video in the series for headache and migraine, and I hope that you've been enjoying them so far. Now that we've worked a lot on the face and scalp, we're going to work into that neck area because our necks can hold a lot more tension than we think of, especially when we're home working on the computer, driving and texting a lot. So when it comes to the last place that we left off was a TMJ, that jaw and soft palette is a good place to go into that neck there. So your neck is a lot of muscle. If you feel it right about here, right underneath that ear, which is a good landmark for this, I'm gonna go down that line, that's all musculature. You have a lot of different overlapping things from, you know, the SCM, you have the scalenes in there, you've got a couple other muscles behind that and overlapping those. Your levator scapula goes in there, that's what lifts your shoulder and that's what we do when we're working on our computer. So that levator scapula is gonna be attaching in those neck area you also have a little bit of that trapezius here. So you have a lot of big muscles there that you can really get into over time. And again, just go slow, start with light pressure, and then work into it. So from right behind the ear, you're right on that occipital ridge here. So you can do small scoops the same way that you did when you were doing the occipital ridge, the uh, TMJ area, and the temple. So you're gonna follow that in little circles. So the circles are going around in this type of fashion. So you're going from the jaw, right behind the ear, a little bit further back towards the occipitals and then down again. So you're getting that tension, you're relaxing the fascia and the skin a little bit around it. And these circular frictions are really the best thing to go to when you're working on anything. They're a good starting point for palpating getting a feel for the muscles and the structure that you're working on, and then seeing what kind of pressure you can use. Again, using your fingertips is a good place to start because you can be very light with them. You don't have to be as careful as you do with the eyes and the soft palate, because again, with all this muscle here, it's protecting the important parts. You just don't wanna do the front of the neck here. So if you feel the front here, that's where your voice box is. You can feel those vibrations if you're talking. You feel a little bit of that bony structure. It doesn't feel too great to poke right here gently, but that is an area where you have your esophagus and everything else that's being protected in there. A little off to the sides is where you can start to feel it's still just as squishy. So you wanna be soft. This is just more of an informational learning spot, but that's where your carotid artery and some of the nerves and uh, pathways are along there. So if you put your hand on your neck, similar to a CPR class might have taught you, you can start to feel your pulse. You want to be right behind that. You want to be in this meaty part here that feels a little tougher. So we're working on that back part of the neck. Again, those scoops. And with the neck, what you can do is it feels like a lot of different ropes depending on how tense your muscles are. You're being gentle. You're not resting your hand on your clavicle or poking your throat. And just do those little scoops. You're going to put your hand there and then you're going to drop your other shoulder. So you're just pulling on those gently using gravity. So it's like if you use your muscles to get it in the right place, you hold your hand where it is and then you just use gravity to assist you like your hand is going to fall slowly. So you're pulling forward on those muscles towards the back of the neck and the side of the neck. You're bringing them forward, you're creating that pressure. And it might not be the most comfortable thing to do when you're starting, but it can make a big difference in relaxing that tension. You can do the opposite where you hook into that same area and you push back towards your hairline and towards the center of your head. You're gonna push back and with this, you're pulling on the skin and the fascia as well as the muscles. So again, you're doing a little push. Push here. push here and you can bring those all the way down into the shoulder if you would like those little pushes and pulls those will create a big difference and you as you start to work on yourself more you'll notice the difference of all the layers that you're working on and you'll get used to feeling where one muscle ends and another begins so you want to again go gentle on your neck you're going to do those little scoops you can use gravity as your friend 
you can also push in the opposite direction. Even if you want to, you can hook in and you're just kind of holding that and leaning your head slowly away from it. So you see how this part of the neck got a little bit more stretched and it became tense, created that slide for my hand. That's because I was stretching the muscles there as I leaned my head away. And I was pressing down on those muscles as I did. So that's another pin and stretch that you can do on the side and the back of your neck. On the back of your neck, let me get a hair tie so you can see it. If you wanna do a pin and stretch on the back of your neck, you're gonna do what we generally tend to do when we're sitting in front of a computer, which is you're gonna hook in, get into that occipital ridge, get a feel for it, and you're gonna slowly look down at your toes. And then you're gonna hook in again, so look straight ahead, hook in and slowly look down at your toes. Hook in again while you're looking straight ahead or up, and slowly look down at your toes. And that's a little bit of a pin and stretch on the muscles across the back of your neck as well. You can do the same thing where you're pulling from the center outward, and this is where we loop all the way back to our first video on occipital ridge, where you can do those little scoops on the back of your neck, do little frictions in the middle, and you're moving out from the center. So along that occipital ridge, you're gonna rotate little circles. And you're gonna pull, you can do those steady hands, just pull gently outward. So you're coming from the center out. And you can go slowly down the neck, come out, let go, go again to the middle, a little bit lower, go out again. And that way you can cover a lot of that surface of the neck. You can bring those all the way forward to that jawbone as long as you're gentle in that soft area, the squishy area right here behind the jaw and that can bring you back forward to the face. So you can do these in any order you like, but these are just good examples of how to do the frictions, what direction, and what kinds of circular frictions, pin and stretches, or just straight fric frictions can be used for headaches and migraines. I hope that this all helped, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.